Hello friend, welcome back to Toyota Maintenance Service Repair Channel. I have here today 1995 Toyota Camry LE. It came for a bunch of service and in this video I will be filming engine oil change. If you want to see how I do this service, stay with me in this video. The first thing I will do is to make sure that engine oil is hot. So I will go ahead and start up this vehicle and let it idle for like 5 minutes. And after that I'm definitely ready to start this engine oil change. I have raised the front of the car to gain access to the draining plug. I put a light here for you. Catching pen. This is where the plug is located. And I put the wrench there for you so you can easily see it. It's a wrench number 4. And when you will be removing the drain bolt, make a note, but don't forget it has that crusher washer underneath it, so you need to catch that too. So I have oil nicely draining in that catch pan. It's super nasty and black, so it was definitely a good time to do that. And here I can show you detail of this bolt I was talking about and that crusher washer or slash sealing washer and that's a good time for me to remove that oil filler cap which is right here right. So clean it check the condition of the residue which is inside right that tells you a lot about the car I can also remove that engine dipstick clean it if I worry about the dust I can put it back the same with this, I can just let it sit on top of it. Now if you look on this cap, it clearly says the engine oil 10W30. If you look in the owner's manual, there are two viscosities recommended, 10W30 and for colder climates 5W30. The engine oil is nicely dripping on the bottom from the pan. I have brand new oil filter ready here. So I can meanwhile continue with removing engine oil filter. You want to make sure you will not burn yourself on the exhaust here. In my case was enough of time and I'm able to get here. Now I can see the previous mechanic over tidied this. This is way too much because it's supposed to be tidied only by hand. So I will need a wrench for this. And let's see together if this oil wrench will be able to grab the filter hard enough to remove it. You never know actually. See, it's squeezing it, it's already crushing it. But fortunately, yeah, fortunately, it was able to release it. Now I can absolutely clearly tell you that this was over tidied because it needed way too much pressure and that filter it's really crushed I will show you later now I can continue by the hand slowly removing this engine oil filter there is some oil coming out of it unfortunately so make sure your engine oil pan the catching pan down there it's below that and you are not dripping all of it on the floor or the driveway and now I will, it's almost removed, but now I will let it also drain so I don't make more mess later when I will be removing it. Here you can see the filter. And this is what I was talking about. Look at the holes which the tool made. Where it really crashed it because it was really over tight. Obviously you have to always remove this rubber gasket with the old filter. Here you can nicely see the detail of that housing, so I will carefully clean it, that I don't introduce any dust or dirt inside, and I will install the new filter. Here you can see the new filter, and we always, before installing it on the housing, we get always a little bit of clean oil, right? And we put it on the rubber gasket, so when we are screwing it on, it will be perfectly fitting. So it's very easy, right? And now comes the important part. I mentioned before already twice, I believe, that this is by hand only. 
So I basically screw all engine oil filters by hand only. I put it really tight and that makes or gives me, uh, I'm sure that this will never get loosened while the vehicle is driving, but I know it's not over tight and I'm not crushing that uh, rubber gasket or damaging the fret. And obviously now I have to go and clean as much as possible the mess, the oil which is on the front of the engine which was coming out of this oil filter. Now the oil was draining approximately 30 minutes so I'm definitely ready to go back and install this bolt in the oil pan. As you can see this is a special washer with the rubber gasket so this is reusable and I can put it back. I will tighten this bolt snug and tight but you want to make sure you don't over tight it. That will be stripping, possibly stripping the thread in the engine oil pan. So you have to be careful about that. Here you can see how that oil was dirty. I'm pretty sure you will agree it was time to change it. Now this manual tells me that this engine which model number is 5S-FE, it's a 2.2 liter, right, four cylinder engine. When you replace the engine oil and the filter, it needs 3.8 US quarts. Which for me means I will go ahead and pour 3 quarts of this engine oil and then I will start taking the measurements of the level of the oil in the engine. And I have to remember, for this service I raised the front of the vehicle, so for the correct measurement I have to lower the vehicle, make sure it's in complete level, and then I can start using the dipstick and measure the level of the engine oil. So I have all three quarts in the engine, one remaining right here, right? So I will start measuring the engine oil level. We'll pull the dipstick out and clean it. Right, it's perfectly clean. Here is the range and put it back. And I'm curious how high I am. And hopefully you can see it with me, I'm not sure. But it's almost in the half. It's either one third or in the half. So you definitely don't want to pour first four quarts and totally overfill the engine. And what I saw, I know, I can pour one third of this can and after that I will put the cap back and I will start the engine and let it run. When I start the engine I will immediately observe that engine oil pressure warning light which is down there. Of course the sound makes it problematic. I'm going to start it. I want to make sure that light goes off in like two seconds. Otherwise there will be a problem. You saw it? Like one second the pressure build up. So I know everything is fine. Now I will immediately go and look underneath the vehicle if I don't have any possible leaks. And I looked underneath the car, looking around this filter, big stick, right here, I have no engine or leaks, so I will let it idle for, let's say, three minutes. After that I did shut off the engine and now I have to wait at least five minutes for the final measurement for the level. Of course, the, once again, the vehicle has to be in perfectly leveled position, otherwise the measurement will be incorrect. And after five minutes Ready to take my final measurement and hopefully I filled it correctly and it will be on the top mark. So I will put it in, alright, all the way and pull it out. And let's see. And if you look with me, it's actually perfectly touching, the oil is perfectly touching the top mark. And if you look with me on this oil can, I used half of it, so there's remaining half of the quart, so 
basically what I used instead of 3.8 quarts as a manual set I used in this engine oil change 3.5 quarts of the engine oil I hope my friend that you find this video interesting it can be helpful to someone and make sure that you are subscribed because I'm actually starting another service on this vehicle in just few minutes so thanks for watching and have a wonderful day